Hi kids, today we're going to travel to Africa and learn about African masks. Africa is the second largest continent in the world and people that live there live in big cities and small villages. The art of Africa can be dated back to prehistoric times and is an important part of African culture. Most often, masks are passed down from generation to generation. Masks are all unique and each one has a special purpose and story. Some are used for decorations, while others are used for ceremonial rituals. They are created with leather, metal, fabric, or wood, and they're often decorated with paint, shells, horns, glass, and fibers. The artists that create these masks are highly regarded in the community. There are many different types of masks. Some are for the full face, some sit on top of the head, and some are worn like a helmet. Some masks represent animals, like this crocodile and a buffalo. Farming is extremely important in Africa. The Bamanan people of Mali believe in a mythical creature named Chihuahua. Chihuahua taught them how to farm. Each year, this headdress is worn in a ceremony to encourage good farming. The headdress has horns of an antelope to symbolize gracefulness, the body of an aardvark, and scales of a pangolian to promote great digging. Most ceremonies that use masks are called masquerades. They are performed by men in front of an audience with dancing and music. Giwagra masks are from the Congo. The beard represents power and authority, and the material around the outside of the mask is called raffia. Raffia is made from the leaves of a raffia palm what kind of shapes do you see? What colors? How do you think the raffia feels? Picasso was influenced by these African masks. Here is a portrait he created. Can you see the similar similarities in the mask and the painting? How about the differences? All right, let's get started on our African mask. What you're going to need is a piece of construction paper. I have a couple other choices here for my eyes and nose and mouth. I have a pair of scissors, some glue, a marker or pencil, and then some doodads to decorate. So I grabbed some pipe cleaners. I found some yarn. Um, I actually found some dried beans, but you could use shells or um, any sort of beads and I found some feathers. I don't know if I'm going to use all that stuff, but I have it just in case I want to and I have a stapler. So let's get started. We're going to have our piece of paper vertically and we are going to fold it in half. Some of you say like a hot dog bun, we say vertically. You're going to line up the corners and go ahead and give it a nice crease. Now our first thing to do is to make an oval. So I'm going to get my marker. I'm going to hold the fold. Remember, hold the fold because we are going to put a dot at the top of the fold right here and then one at the bottom. Now I'm going to air draw from the top coming around towards the edge and back down and around. Make sure you do this slowly. When you're ready, you can get your pencil or marker to the edge and then come back in and around. Now we can go ahead and cut this shape out. This is going to be the base for our African mask. I can save my scraps in case I want to add some details. Now I should have an oval. If you have two halves, you can go ahead and tape them together. Um, that's not a problem. Now what I want to do is just have a little slit on the top and bottom and on both sides. We'll cut this. And then when we're all done decorating our mask, we can staple these together to give our African mask form or dimension. Just 
be able to do like this. Okay. All right, now let's get to work. Go ahead and choose one of your pieces of paper. I think I'm gonna grab my black. We are going to do our eyes first. Now we want our mask to be symmetrical and that means it's gonna be the same on both sides. So I'm going to have my black paper. Since I want it symmetrical, I only wanna cut one time. So if I fold this paper in half and then I cut, I'll have two of the same. Now we know that African masks use a lot of geometric shapes, so I want you to think about circles, triangles, rectangles, anything geometric. I think for these, I will do oh, more ovals. Then I'll hold both pieces of paper together. Let's see how these look. All right, not too shabby. Now I want to get another piece of paper. Maybe I'll grab my yellow. I don't need this whole one, so I'll just cut part of it and fold this in half again because I'm like, I'm gonna have two. And maybe I want to do a rectangle in the middle. Maybe a little bit thinner. Put these back together. All right, that's looking all right. Now I'm gonna move to the nose. I think I'll stick with my yellow and Put a piece of paper. Now, my nose, I only have one nose, but I still want it to be symmetrical, so I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to hold the fold. You want to go ahead and draw out your nose shape first. You can. I think I'm going to come out like that. So then I'll Cut my paper. There's my symmetrical nose. Feel like it needs. Oh, you know what? I have paper hole punchers. I can go ahead and add some of these down my nose if I want. Or I could do some on my eyes. But I have beads, so maybe beans, so maybe I'll do that. I don't have to glue anything down yet. I can just start setting up what I think I might want. Uh, now I'm gonna move on to the mouth. So I got my black paper. We only have one mouth, so we're gonna do the same thing we did with the nose. We'll fold it in half. And if you need to draw it out, draw it out. If not, you can freehand it. Now I love the negative space. So when I go to cut, I'm gonna cut right here, holding my fold. But then here comes some negative space. Are you ready? Dun, da, da, da. Ooh, that looks wonderful. Now I have some red here. I feel like I need to get some pattern up into the forehead or under the eyes. Maybe I'll just cut some strips. But whatever I add on this side, I have to add on the other side to make it symmetrical. I'll just do one of those. 
So I think I'm liking the setup of this. Three up there. All right, I think I'm ready to start gluing. In fact, just pull these off. you're using wet glue you don't need too much you could also use a glue stick Now we can start adding some of those little details. If you had your little paper punchers, you could do that. If you had beads, you could add your beads. You could add glitter, raffia. I don't have any raffia, but if you had some, the dollar store has some usually. Um, maybe I'll do, oh, I had my yarn. If I wanted to go ahead and add yarn to the side, like the raffia, I could fold the yarn in half, poke it through the mask. Now I have this loop. I can grab my little tails and bring it down. So I'll show you again, I folded it in half, took the folded edge, popped it through the hole. Now I have a little circle. I'll grab my tail and pull it through. I could add a whole bunch onto the side there. That would look great. And I also have feathers. I might wanna add some feathers going up the top. If my feathers are too long, go ahead and trim them. Like so. All right, once this all dries, you can go ahead, take your little slits and overlap them, and then your stapler Oops. And give your African mask some form. I'm going to have a hard time getting the top one with my feathers. So maybe I'll just leave the top one. There we go. Now you have a symmetrical geometric African mask. Have a great day.